Okay, we're going to talk about the tibia and fibula and answer the questions, what are the tibia and fibula, what are their primary bony landmarks, and what are some reasons to learn about them? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So to begin with, the tibia, that's the principal bone of the leg. There's the tibia, and that's Latin for shin bone, because that's the bone that makes the shin. And so if we go to the proximal and then the superior part of the tibia are these two articulating surfaces or condyles. So the one on that one that's on the same side as the fibula we call the lateral epicondyle. And I think of that one as fibulateral. That's the la fibula is on the lateral side. That's the lateral condyle which makes this the medial condyle. And these two tibial condyles that are there articulate with the femoral condyles and then they make the, um, the synovial bicondylar hinge joint of the knee. Between the two condyles is this prominence or eminence that's that protrudes up so they call it the intercondylar eminence between the two condyles and eminence and the intercondylar eminence serves as an attachment for the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments and now on the proximal anterior portion of the tibia is this bump or swelling and we use the word tuberosity since it's on the tibia this is the tibial tuberosity which serves as a landmark for uh, muscle attachment for the quadriceps femoris muscle group, which then envelop the patella, and then the connective tissue tendon slash ligament continues on to attach to the tibial tuberosity. And if we look at some surface anatomy, there's the tibial tuberosity just below the patella. Then we have on the, the lateral surface of the tibia this crest that's called the interosseous border. It's what it serves as an attachment for the interosseous membrane. Um, and then here on the medial side of the tibia, distally, and it forms the medial surface of the ankle joint, this is the medial malleolus, and that word malleolus is Latin for hammer, because that's what it kind of looks like. And there's the medial malleolus and surface anatomy, and we do a pivot so you can see a medial view. And now there's the medial malleolus um, that has this dense connective tissue called the flexor retinaculum that goes to attach to the calcaneus, and it forms a tunnel called the tarsal tunnel. And through the tarsal tunnel, we have the posterior tibial artery and vein, the tibial nerve, and then the Tom, Dick, and Harry tendons, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, that are going to course through that tarsal tunnel. Now, the lateral bone of the leg is called the fibula. Now, fibula is Latin for brooch, because if we look at these old-time brooches, it kind of looks like that pin, uh, supporting pin on a brooch. But we also see this word peroneus, which is Greek for brooch. So whenever we talk about the fibula, you will you will hear these two terms, the fibularis longus or the peroneus longus, the common fibular nerve or the common peroneal nerve. They're basically saying the same thing, one's using Latin, one's using Greek. Now what is this proximal part of the fibula? It's rounded, it is the head of the fibula. And the head of the fibula serves as an attachment for some muscles. And so there's the hamstring musculature and the lateral one is the biceps femoris, which attaches to the head of the fibula. It also serves as an attachment for the fibular collateral or lateral collateral ligament of the knee. Now there is the, the something below the head, which is the neck. So this is the neck of the fibula. And if we then zoom in on this and we see that there's the common peroneal nerve that watch it wrap around the neck of the fibula. And so if there's a fibular neck fracture, the common peroneal nerve is an, uh, a nerve that may be injured. Now notice on the medial surface of the fibula is also an interosseous border that serves as an attachment for the interosseous membrane that goes to the interosseous border of the tibia. That is dense collagenous connective tissue, that interosseous membrane, it forms a syndesmosis joint that knits the tibia and fibula together. On the lateral surface of the ankle, or distal fibula, we have the lateral malleolus. And so there's the surface anatomy, and if we just pivot so we see the lateral surface, there's the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis muscle tendons, and they then course posterior and inferior to that lateral malleolus. So what I want to do now is focus on this ankle joint for a second, because there's the lateral malleolus, and there's the medial malleolus, and there's the talus bone. And so 
the talus bone forms between the, the tibia and fibula, it forms what's called a mortise joint. So there's the talus, and you see that that is the tibiotalar joint or a mortise joint between the medial and lateral malleoli, and that is the joint that uh, enables us to do the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And that, my friends, is the tibia and fibula in a nutshell. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>